Regal me, baby. Regal me, baby. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead, baby. What's poppin' icons? It's your girl, Regal Cardi A, and you guys are back with the Regal Me Baby TV. And today, I'm doing something a little different. We're gonna be getting into a mukbang. I love watching mukbangs and I love to eat. So I was like, why don't you do a mukbang? Like, I've been wanting to do it. So I am, I got some wings. Me and my boo, we went grocery shopping and at Safeway, they have a little wing bar. And I know on the west side, they fire. So I wanted to try. Plus, I've been craving wings and I haven't satisfied that craving. So yeah, we're going to do that. I got to talk to y'all about some things and the way God has just been moving. If y'all hear the birdies, they are just outside my window. I always have my window open just so I can hear the birds. But yeah, so I got, boom, the wings. I also got some chili garlic chalua. I have my major melon mountain dew and then... Of course, the Hidden Valley. Now, I kind of want to get all this out the way because I'm not trying to mess up this dress. So, I'm going to cut this because I already know I'm about to smash these wings. <laughs> I'm smashing these wings, okay? Man. Uh, so, I just want to tell y'all, like, about some bomb shit that's just been going on. Uh, and honestly, too, I have a lot of new eyes on the channel. Oh, shit. A lot of new eyes on the channel. Yeah, Opportunity to introduce myself and talk to y'all a little bit about who I am, what y'all can expect on this channel. Because I already know y'all like, girl, you did the fashion video. We loved it and we ain't seen shit else. But that's actually not true. There's fashion and everything that I do. So catch them shorts if you haven't, okay? But this one is... A green chili verde wing. Y'all see all the seasons and shit? Yes, yeah, so. Let me eat a little bit, y'all. Mm. I got my napkin because I'm well, obviously just need a napkin, but I like when people be smacking sometimes. But sometimes I'm just like, damn, that's just overboard. I wasn't raised like that, so I'll always be like, I can't do that. But anyway, so my name is Regal, y'all. I am so many things, but overall, I am a creative. I'm a designer, a fuck self doubt coach, a model, a dancer, a mom, and a black woman who is allowing herself to heal out loud in on purpose, you know? So. <laughs> Mm, that shit fire. So, my brand is all about, what I'm all about, is the fuck self-doubt lifestyle. And doubt is something that's going to be with us at every fucking level. Like, no matter what you do in life, there's going to be a little a negative thought in your head. Questioning, like, can you do this? Are you sure? What happened last time? You know, or... Well, I don't know about that because people are going to laugh at you or all these things, right? And it could be your voice. It could be your mom's voice. It could be your best friend's voice. It could be a multiple to the people's voice. And it comes from being judged, right? Or also trying to protect you. Mm -hmm. I used to think that I couldn't talk to people about self-doubt or help coach people through it because I still have self-doubt. But then I realized like, no boo, you can't eradicate it, but you develop skills and you have like a muscle that is strong enough to get over your self-doubt. You know what I'm saying? And once I got that <laughs> once I got that perspective, it allowed me to be free of feeling like I wasn't where I need to be, I wasn't good enough, or I wasn't doing the right things, because it's like, no, you're on another level now, you know, you've learned more, you've grown more, and you just have to implement the skills that you're learning to help you deal with your self-doubt, that shit ain't going nowhere, and the analogy that God gave to me was like, so your self-doubt, I don't want to put a little heat on this barbecue, so your self-doubt, right, think of it like your little sister, 
and you trying to go out to meet your man or your woman, what have you. And your little sister like, hey, where you going? I want to come. Uh-uh. If you don't take me, I'm going to tell mom. Da -da -da -da. Nagging you, trying to get cute, trying to get dressed so she can go to the park for it with you to see what you're getting into. Now, you don't ever let your little sister stop you. You be like, all right. And you figure out a way to maneuver around her little sneaky ass. You feel me? And that's what you got to do with your self-doubt. And that's why my brand is all about saying fuck self-doubt because... You got to get a little gully with it sometimes and let it know who's boss and let it know that, yeah, maybe you are protecting me because of what happened last time, but I don't need that type of protection because even if something happens, that's not the outcome that I want. It's going to teach me something that I need to know to get to where I'm trying to go to help me with my ascension, my elevation. And so what I've learned is that you got to go deep to figure out why is it even here? When did it even start? You know, like shadow work. Mm. Mm. So, it's been a beautiful transition accepting that perspective and allowing myself just to be great, you know? And to express myself because like my motto's here at Stay Regal Radio, that's the podcast, Regal Me Baby TV, <laughs> is to stay true, do you, and fuck self-doubt. Because doing you, that's the secret sauce. And we live in a society that be trying to tear people down. This one is salt and vinegar, which I shouldn't be eating, but... No crunch. No crunch whatsoever. But we live in a society where people are afraid to be different and afraid to show up as themselves because people will talk about them. And I feel that, you know? Even somebody who, you know, I'm 6'3". And as I can see, <laughs> I'm a thick, thick grub. So I've been like this my whole life. And people will always talk about me. Like in fourth grade, third grade, they used to call me like Bexilla and shit. And always, like my whole entire life, I've been talked about, even in my family. And I don't like that shit. I'm sensitive. Like, don't be talking about me, nigga. <laughs> but what I started doing and how that shit came back tenfold <laughs> and continued to have people talk about me because when I was younger... I used to talk about other people, like, I should have the light off me. That's cool. Instead of, like, bucking against that shit and, like, no, don't talk about people and saying, yeah, I am big, so I'll fuck your ass up. <laughs> That's what I should have been doing. And let these people know. Stop fucking playing with me. But I was nearly nice and timid. Or... I was nice and timid because I thought I had to be. You feel me? I think I heard something when I was younger that stuck with me. It was like, if you're a big girl, I don't know who I heard this from, but if you're a big girl, basically you have to have a, like a nice personality so that you can be liked. <laughs> and maybe that's what stopped because I used to be a little, <laughs> I used to pop off. When I was in 12th grade, not 12th grade, when I was 12 and 7th grade, my friends didn't want to be my friends anymore because I was too vulgar. <laughs> I used to walk around telling people to suck my dick. <laughs> I sure did. I remembered that. And just this week. And they were like, we don't want to be your friend anymore because like you're just too vulgar. And like you're just too like aggressive. And then I remember just feeling like, oh my God, like they don't want to be my friends. Like... But, like, I'm just playing around and, like, I don't mean it seriously. Like, we're just joking and, like, this is what I was thinking because standing up to myself for myself at that time, like, I started feeling like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this. Damn. I just wonder how I would be and who I would be if I told they yes as well. And that's cool. You ain't got to be my friend. And, by the way... What you can do is suck my dick. <laughs> Yo, 
y'all can suck my dick, okay? Because that would have given me an opportunity to find the bitches. I mean, not say bitches. It was little girls. But to find the friends <clears throat> who accepted me, who really saw me and knew. She don't mean nothing about it. She just expressing herself because she don't really have the opportunity to do it. But, you know, we wasn't as aware as we are now or and as the children are now because these kids, these kids be on some next level shit the way they be talking to their parents. So, yes, your self-doubt is something that you can most certainly learn the skills to continue overcoming. You do not have to be a slave to it. You do not have to stay in that mental prison. Maybe you are free. We free. Right now, as we are, we are free. And so, I just want to encourage somebody today. Baby, you free. It ain't going nowhere. You just got to build your strength to continue getting over it, you know? You can do that shit. You can do that shit. And as a creative, you know, I let that come out in different forms. I like to cook. That's something that really helps me um, stay grounded. Helps me feel more connected to my ancestors. I come from a family of cooks. Um, cooking makes me feel connected to those women who came before me. So I like to do that. And it, I could be so damn stressed out or angry. And then I just start chopping, put my music on and going and just like listening to them tell me like, oh, you could put that or, ooh, you know, put that in there. Do a little something like this. Do a little ch -ch -ch of that. And by the time I'm done, I feel so good. My body might be hurting, but I feel so good. Mm. All right, all right, books, screenplays, verses, <laughs> songs. Now, I wouldn't say like I'm a, no, fuck that. I've been saying my whole life I'm gonna win a Grammy. I'm gonna win me a Grammy one day. I've sung Fuck Self Doubt. Definitely gonna release that this year. It's just about finding another producer. So I'm excited about that. That shit's hot. Mm. I just want to make music and everything that I make. I want people to feel good about themselves when they hear my shit, they dress in my shit. When they see me perform, I just want them to feel good. That's what it's about. Feel good and know like, damn, not doing exactly what she doing, but I can do what I want to do because I see her do it so freely, you know, and not giving a damn what people think about her. Uh, oh, excuse me, y'all. Also, let me try some of this. Check out actual hot sauce. It's not hot. It's just chili, garlic chili sauce. All right. How much sodium is in this while I'm all just drenching? It's not that bad. Is that grams or milligrams? 110 milligrams. But honestly, I have taken salt almost on my diet. Mm. There you go. I can taste that flavor. This is better than when it was on that barbecue wing. So out of the salt and vinegar, which I know I just told you I took the salt on my diet, but shh. <clears throat> the barbecue in those uh, green chili ones, the green chili ones bussing.
Mm. Now I know. I've never seen a green chili or a wing before. Mm. So, I know I told y'all I was a designer. Hopefully you guys have seen my shorts. Now the models, shoes and purses and then the sunglasses. I um, designed those, custom design. That was the Imposition Collection. I launched on February 3rd of this year. And definitely my love child, um, a piece of my soul that I share with the world. I'm so happy to do it and just so inspired. Um, that was really something I've been wanting to do since 2019. That's the first shoe I ever designed. <laughs> Excuse me. And it was because I was modeling for the Full Figured and Sassy Expo. And I was going to be uh, modeling some lingerie from Queen's Closet. And y'all, she was like, boo, the outfit you wearing, I need something real jazzy. Like, I need you to have a jazzy ass shoe. I'm a size 12. Ain't no jazzy ass shoes for us. <laughs> we got barely hair at best. Okay, so I was like, fuck. And I'll, I'll insert the first shoe, actually, so y'all can see. But I'm like, damn. And then I caught her like, since I can't find nothing, like, I'm going to just make it. And she was like, okay. Like, I trust you. Go ahead. And y'all, I just got the vision and the idea. And I just start, I spray paint the shoes, spray painted the shoes. And luckily, I had a second pair because, like I said, this is my first time, y'all. I did not know that spray paint was going to squeeze. This shit was tight and small. I could not put my big, well, I could put my foot in it, but it was a struggle. And it hurt so bad. So I made another one. It was like my prototype, you know? And since then, I was like, damn. And at the time, I was selling jewelry and I was doing my YouTube channel, barely, and my podcast. But I really wanted to start making things with my own hands. Like, that was what my goal was. And I remember telling, um, shout out to Table of Ten Mastermind, ran by my cousin, Sasha Br um, Brackens. I was going to say Brooks. I don't know why. <laughs> Sasha Brackens. I remember telling the ladies, like, I just really desire to make something with my own hands that I can just call my own. Like, I love jewelry, you know, I love styling jewelry and things like that. And just jewelry has always been something that I've been um, drawn to, mostly in part by my mom. You know, my mom, she is the, my original fly girl. Can't nobody do it like Wicked Wanda. And so that's where I get my fashion sense from, just seeing her style herself and always had jewelry out the ass, like brooches, belts, hats, everything that you can imagine. Like an accessory, she had it. Mm. Come on. So that desire grew. And in the time where I really have to learn how to transmute a lot of pain that I was in. Not only pain, but anger. The imposition collection was birth. And ooh, what a beautiful, beautiful transformation it was. Okay, I transmuted the fuck out of that shit. And now it's just growing and growing. Like I've been creating clothes and more purses and more bags and more shoes and so I'm super excited to see where this shit's gonna take us. Situation that happened to me. So the last two days, me and my daughter, we've been beefing like top ramen, right? And it sucks because, you know, we've been doing a lot of work on our relationship and I felt like it was getting into a better place. And it still is, but relationships just take, it's hard work, you know? Mm. So, We have therapy, family therapy, but there's no problem solving. We just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I'm frustrated beyond measure. It's a lot of residual stuff from the night before. I grab my backpack, I grab my speaker, and I just like, I gotta go walk. And I'm just belting out gospel music. So I'm singing, take me to the king. I'm trying to get my mind right, you feel me? Hold on, belting this shit out and I passed this dude on the um, 
on the street. And his shirt says good vibes. You know, we look at each other in the eyes, acknowledge each other, and I just keep pushing them. Mm. So, on the way home, as I'm about to hit the parking lot for the house, from God, my intuition, you know, whatever you want to call it, I'm like, go sit on that little, go sit on that electrical box. And I'm like, thinking, like, why would I sit there? Like, I want to go sit on the bench that's by the pool, by that big old grassy knoll in the community. That's where I want to go sit because that's where I'll be sitting. And I'm just like, damn, go sit on the box. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and so, I remember going to it and then it kind of smelling all chemical bleed. I'm like, see, I don't even want to sit here. It smells like something. Like they just did pest control or something. <clears throat> so I'm sitting there. I'm still singing and stuff. Now I'm sitting directly in front of somebody's house across the street. And so I got the music on my speaker. So, you know, I'm just looking at the cars pass by and just calming the fuck down so I don't nut up, basically. And letting God speak to me. So, I look up and I can see, like, a guy come out the front door and then, like, look over and then go to his backyard. And I see him do that, like, twice. And so, I'm in my zone and I'm about to switch from the gospel music and put on the reading. And as I do, the guy is coming outside with a dog. I'm like, oh, shit. It was the guy that I just passed on the street. Okay, cool. So he walks up to me. And he was like, hey. He was like, you seem like you just have a really dope spirit and a slight about you. And I just, I don't know at the time. I was like, aw. And I was like, aw. I don't know if he said she. Like, I just randomly was told to buy this and give it to somebody that, you know, I forget what he said. He was like, and that person is you. And I was like, damn. I was like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, and it was a snicker. So I took it. <laughs> and then he asks me, how long does it take a woman to forgive herself? And I was just like, ugh my heart you know coming off of an argument with my niece my daughter and the constant self-love journey self-awareness you know self-forgiveness um i was just like okay why are you coming over here asking me these things sir <laughs> And I already knew why. Like, it was definitely like a very God-driven interaction. And so, you know, I answer as best as I could. And then I end up crying. And he was like, can I please give you a hug? And I'm like, yes, because I was about to ask you if I could hug you. <laughs> so we hug. And then we ended up just sitting there talking for like, probably like 45 minutes. And then I was like, hey, like, you know, I know he had his dog. And I was like, I know she probably wants to walk. Like, we can walk. Like, I actually stay up in here, too. He was like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And so we ended up taking a walk throughout the community and walking for, like, another 30 minutes. Just talking about life and God and how we came to know God and how it was different from what we learned and growing up and love life, platonic love. Like, just everything. Not even astrology, but, like, zodiac signs. Um, like a super divine interaction. You know, he gave me some churches and some, we talked about the Transformation Church and Michael Todd and just different sermons. And I talked to him a little bit about spirituality and stuff. And it allowed me just to get present and get centered in the moment. And for me to understand, like, I know it's difficult right now. I know life is not as as structured or as stable as you want it to be, but you are right where the hell you're supposed to be. And I need you to remember that because there are times where I can like, am I? Wait. And it's like, no, fuck that shit. Fuck self-doubt. You're right where you're supposed to be. 
And sometimes it's not just you doubting, but it's naysayers. Fuck them too. <laughs> and I don't say that in like, I have to explain this to people because that's been my motto for the last couple of years. And maybe I need to stop saying that. But I say, you know, fuck these people. Because I used to care so much about what people say and seeking that validation. And it was just a way for me to be like, nah, we don't need that. We're not doing any of this for anybody else's validation. You already chosen. God already gave you everything that you need. So why are we waiting for others to tell us that, yeah, you got the green light. You got the green light. You feel me? I'm going to drop my niece and my baby off at school this morning. My boo hit me up like, hey, some random guys at the door looking for you. <laughs> and yeah, he said you guys were taking a walk and talking about God and stuff. She was like, girl, I'm going on my back. I had to do the dishes and then I had group therapy. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna hit him up later. While I was in therapy, he came back and I couldn't talk to him because I was literally in the middle of group therapy. So he gave me a letter and I'm a just read y'all a, a smidge of the letter. So I'm going to mess it up. And he left me some encouraging words, some resources. And then he poured into me because he said, it was a blessing to have met me yesterday and to talk to him and for him to talk to me. And he really blessed his life. And he, you know, sold into me. And I really, really appreciated that. Like, he just didn't know. Like, the letter itself was beautiful. The resources he gave me there was beautiful. But the seed he sold into me as well was, like, right on time. And... God is always just showing me like you know our intuition can be telling us the most smallest minute thing we think so insignificant right but I needed that moment with him and from what he's telling me he needed that moment with me and so the blessing and listening and being present because like I told y'all I was about to start this reading Already coming off being irritated with my daughter. And it was funny too, because he said when he saw me walking down the street, that's when he first felt led to say something to me. But he a little hesitated and he was like, ah, excuse me. So when he came outside, something just told him to come outside. He was about to get ready to take his dog for a walk. And he looked up and he saw me again. He was like, oh shit, like, that's the lady that was just walking. Like, I, I got to make sure I give it to her now. But he even was feeling like, I don't want to just, like, bum rush her. I just don't. Like, how do I, you know, like, God, how do I freaking even approach her and just be like, hey, I felt led. You know, God led me to give you the Snickers. Like, I literally brought this for you and not make it weird. So his way to do that was to ask me that question. And for him... It was something he really wanted to know about a situation he was going through. How long it takes a woman to forgive herself. Not knowing me from Adam or Eve and not understanding how profound and how much I needed to be asked that question. And it felt like it was just really God coming to me like, baby, how long is it going to take you to forgive yourself? And him not even knowing at the time, like in his hesitation when I was walking, I had just started walking, so I probably wouldn't have received him or that Snickers the way I had once I had time to walk there, walk back, and be a little, you know, or decompress. Um, so even when you feel like you're not listening, right, or something isn't going the way that it should, if you truly do listen or finally give in to it, it'll work out the way it's supposed to. But I just think, too, like, what if I did, being my stubborn-ass self, walk to the bench I normally sit at, you know, 
And maybe I would have seen him still anyway when he went to walk his dog. So it felt like there was nothing that we could have done to really make this stop because he didn't know I lived in that community. You know what I'm saying? And maybe he would have turned down a little because it's like a doggy trail. And it's not per se a dog park, but that's where a lot of people take their dogs at. Um, so listen, listen to your gut, to your intuition, to that deep knowing that you be having, y'all. Like no matter how small it is, because we just don't know the beauty that can come out of it, you know? The truly, truly beautiful. And now I have a, a connection with somebody and I don't know where that connection going to take us, but I'm blessed to, even if that doesn't go past that moment and past this interaction, I was blessed by that. And now I'm in a better mood today and a better spirit. And I'm on here sharing with y'all, you know, and it's just like the reciprocity. Keep it going. Keep it flowing. And I know sometimes for me, it wasn't until these last few years that I was really able to start trusting the intuition I have and the gift of it and the knowing that I be having. I mean, this love that I have for myself, baby, every day I get to have a new experience with myself, a new and deeper, more meaningful, intimate, connection experience i get to be in awe of my existence i get to be in awe of the love that i try to give others even when sometimes i don't feel like it's getting um that reciprocity you know what i'm saying and just being able to sit with myself and listen to the birds like literally my bed is right here i wish i'm gonna show y'all one day but the tree is right there so sometimes it's like What's that? Are you playing like bird noises? Like every time I call you, it's just chirping. And I'm like, nah, like I get blessed with that every single day. And I can sit here on this bed and just zone out. And even that, it's like we're never alone. We're never alone. Nature, ancestors, God. Well, I ain't about to eat no more. But I might. <laughs> So yes, y'all, that is who I am in a nutshell. If you need someone to holler at, if your friend's just about tired of your shit, <laughs> come holler at me. I will leave the link in the description. Go ahead and get you a fucking sesh on my books so that we can talk about what's really holding you back and what you feel like is holding you back. And so that you can understand that you have everything that you need to overcome that. Um, I love y'all. I love me. And I can't wait to see who we about to be. Ah. Please go check me out. Both my IGs, Regal Me Baby TV. That's going to be the modeling coaching one. And then we have Royal Regal Designs. And that's for all the bad bitches and goddesses that pops flavor and drips sauce, honey. Come choose luxury. Come choose Royal Regal Designs, baby. Also, check out the website. You can book me there for speaking engagements, coaching sessions, and buy and peep the new merch. So that's regalmebabytv.com slash shop if you want the designs. And just regalmebabytv.com if you want to just check everything else out, okay? I love y'all, man. Make sure you loving yourself. Speak nice to yourself. Rub up on yourself, okay? Hold yourself. Because you all you got at the end of the day. And you're the only motherfucker you cannot break up with. I love y'all. Stay true. Do you. Fuck self-doubt. Peace and blessings. Peace.